Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Camille. I'm a first year medical student as well as a registered nurse. And today's video is going to be all about moderate sedation and interventional radiology. I'm gonna be going over what moderate sedation is, how we administer it, and different effects to watch out for and what to look for um, before and during the sedation process. All right, without further ado, let's get started. <laughs> All right, so today's video is going to be all about using moderate sedation and in interventional radiology. Okay, so what is moderate sedation? Moderate sedation is a reduced level of awareness that's caused by different medications that are administered by a specially trained nurse, okay? Um, moderate sedation can also be called twilight sedation. These two terms are used interchangeably, and a lot of the times patients refer to um, the sedation as twilight, okay? Um, mastering sedation, I always like to say, is kind of like a fine art and a balancing act. Every patient is different and everyone responds differently to these medications, okay? Um, however, overall, moderate sedation, um, whenever you are administering it, the airway is still maintained by the patient, meaning there is no breathing tube down their throat. The patient is still able to respond to verbal and tactile stimuli, such as during the procedure, if you need them to hold their breath, for example, um, or do something of that nature, then they're able to respond to that command and do as you asked. And also it is only used for short to medium length procedures. I would say any procedure that's lasting over an hour plus would require something more of like a max sedation, which is monitored, monitored anesthesia care, where they can give um, different dosages of medications as well as stronger medications to, prov to provide more sedative effects. Moderate sedation consists of two different medications. Fentanyl and Versed. Versed is also called midazolam. That's the generic name. Um, however, most of the time in practice, it is referred to as Versed. So fentanyl is a pain medication, um, and really that's what it does, right? It reduces the patient's pain that might be felt during the procedure, makes them more comfortable in that sense. And Versed is a relaxing uh, medication. It's an andiolytic, right? So it'll reduce anxiety. It also has a bit of an amnesia effect. So the patient might not remember the procedure in its entirety or only bits and pieces, okay? And these two medications combined provide that sedative effect of being comfortable and relaxed throughout the procedure and not feeling any pain, right? So a little bit more information about fentanyl specifically. This medication is given IV push. A standard dose is between 25 and 50 micrograms. Um, likewise, it is an opioid medication that is used for pain as explained previously, and it is fast acting and has a short half-life. So that's why we like it, right? So it works very quickly. Um, however, it does not last very long, right? Those effects don't last long, um, which is exactly what we want, especially for those short to medium length procedures. We don't wanna give them a medication that will keep the patient sleep for hours on end, which will then prolong their recovery time, prolong their time to wake up, and prolong their stay in the hospital, okay? Especially if it is an outpatient procedure where the patient should be discharged that same day. Okay, so a little bit more information now about Versed or midazolam. Um, again, this medication is also given IV push. A standard dose for this medication is anywhere between a half to one milligram per dose. Um, it is a benzodiazepine, right? So it has that anxiolytic effect as well as that short-term amnesia effect that I mentioned. So um, again, this is also a fast-acting and short half-life drug, just as the fentanyl was. Um, and these two medications used together will really pr provide that sedation for these procedures. Um, Likewise, always inform the patients before this, before the getting the sedation about this amnesia effect. Um, I've had patients say like, you know, like, oh, that's great. I don't want to remember the procedure um, and I don't remember the procedure, but there are times where, you know, if you don't tell them and they don't remember, they might get freaked out, right? Like, oh my gosh, what happened? I don't remember. Just let them know that is a side effect of the medication and that's completely normal if they do experience that. So one additional sedation medication that I did want to go over um, is Benadryl. This is also given IV push. However, only in certain instances is this given. Um, this is given more so for either a patient that um, is not being sedated well enough with the medications on board already, so the fentanyl and Versed, or for instance, let's say that someone has an allergy to either of those medications, this can be a little bit of a supplement, right? So Benadryl, as we know, is not really intended 
for sedation primarily. However, its secondary effects do have that sedative properties, right? So this is a longer acting medication. Um, again, as mentioned, really it is a first generation, generation antihistamine, which is its primary use, but it does have some sedative properties that have helped patients um, feel more relaxed, comfortable um, during the procedure, okay? So a standard dose of this is 25 to 50 milligrams. It's a one-time dose, so this is not like the fentanyl and Versed, where those you can redose very often. This is kind of like a one and done kind of thing during the procedure. So this slide is very important. It's really going over determining patient fit for sedation. This is something that every nurse or anybody administering medicines for sedation must look out for, must review, and make sure that you know this stuff before administering any meds, right? So you always wanna make sure that your patient has been NPO, meaning no, had nothing to eat or drink at least eight to 12 hours before the procedure, okay? Um, very important, the medications can cause nausea and vomiting. We don't want the risk of aspiration. So if they have a full belly and they do vomit and they are sedated, meaning you know they're still sleepy, they might not be completely asleep, but they're sleepy, that's an airway risk, right? They can aspirate, so inhale whatever they vomited up and then cause aspiration pneumonia and other um, effects, right? Likewise, you always wanna look at the patient's allergies, make sure they're not allergic to any of the medications you're giving, right? Fentanyl and Versed, um, very important, right? Obviously, you don't wanna give a patient a medication that they're allergic to, okay? Um, always, I always ask my patients about their previous sedation experiences, right? So have you had sedation in the past? If so, how did you react to the sedation? Did you feel sleepy enough? Did you feel too awake? And did you have any nausea or vomiting afterwards, right? Those are all very common questions and very important questions to ask your patient before you give them any medications. Also, looking at their past medical history. Do they have CKD, right? So chronic kidney disease, sleep apnea, how old are they? These are all things that can affect the way the medication works, right? So if a patient has CKD, that medication, you might not need as much. Why? Because a lot of this medication is filtered out through the kidneys, and if their kidneys aren't working, then that medication stays in the body longer. Sleep apnea, again, that's an airway risk, right? So fentanyl giving that a common side effect is it reduces your respiratory drive, right? Um, so if a patient has sleep apnea, they're already an airway risk. Giving them fentanyl can even further that risk, right? So now let's say they do get very sleepy and now you know they can't control or hold their own airway, right? Again, age comes into that as, into play as well, right? The older your patient is, um, a lot of the times the medication lasts longer in their bodies, right? Their kidneys aren't working as well. Their liver doesn't work as well. They don't have as much perfusion. Not to say that you know they're not having any, but it's slower compared to someone, let's say that's 30 or 40 years old, right? So all very important things to consider prior to giving sedation. Also the patient weight is important, right? So a patient that's very, very small that weighs maybe 50 to 60 kilos might not require as much sedation compared to someone that might be 100 plus kilograms, right? Um, again, airway protection, that goes into play with the sleep apnea. Um, do they have COPD, asthma, um, things of that nature? Again, you wanna make sure that you have that airway protection. And um, also one thing that you wanna look at is um, how they can, if they can't protect themselves, right? Are they aphasic? Do they have a previous stroke? Stuff, stuff of that nature that can um, cause an airway risk, right? Um, anxiety, how anxious is the patient about the procedure, right? Some patients that are super, super anxious um, might require a little bit more of that Versed, right? That anxiolytic compared to patients that are very calm, cool, and collected and had this done several times before might not need as much. Again, like I said, it's kind of a balancing act, balancing act and a fine art because every patient is different and you want to have make sure that they're very comfortable during the procedure, but also that you're doing this safely, okay? Last important thing is lab values. Obviously, you need to look at all of your lab values. Um, one lab value in specific that I like to look at is potassium. Um, cardiac functioning is very important. Um, a low potassium or a high potassium can put you at risk for different um, arrhythmias, and these medications can um, actually make that risk even higher if let's say the patient has a very low or very high potassium, okay? So just some key points to look at. Obviously you also just want to look at your patient overall um, and there's also many more different key factors that go into play about sedating patients, but these are just the ones that I look at personally and I think are some of the most important ones in the list, okay? Okay, so this is a very important slide and something that you have to have to have to remember about giving sedation is you always need monitoring, right? Always need 
continuous and active monitoring of a patient's vital signs. That includes blood pressure every five minutes, a heart rate and EKG rhythm that's continuously going. You need a continuous O2 sat as well as CO2 capnography continuously. Okay. Also, always, um, if the patient comes in on room air, put them on two liters of oxygen via nasal cannula um, or whatever your hospital protocol is. That being said, if the patient comes on on, let's say, five liters, six liters per nasal cannula, because that's what they're standardly on, obviously don't drop them down to two, keep them on whatever they are at standard, but this is more for patients that come on with no oxygen. Um, you always still give them that supplemental O2 um, for the duration of the procedure, okay? Now, one thing to note is any significant change in vital signs obviously requires an immediate action. Um, so let's say your patient comes in 100% O2, you give them a dose of the sedation. A typical dose is one milligram of Versed and 50 mics of fentanyl. That's kind of usually what you start off with. Um, for most general med patients or generally healthy quote unquote patients, right? So no chronic issues, um, came in as outpatient. That's a very standard dose that we start off with, especially in IR. Um, and you notice that their oxygen dropped from that 100% to now 88%, okay? And it's dropping, right? Two things you can do, okay? You can up your O2, right? Your nasal cannula, go to four liters, whatever you need to, to see if you can help bump that up. Likewise, I always stress this, talk with your patient. Wake them up a little bit. Did they fall asleep with that one in 50? Just nudge them a little bit and be like, hey, can you take a couple deep breaths for me? 90% of the time, that is enough for the patient to take a couple deep breaths. Wake up just a little bit, and then bring their O2 sat up, right? So that the mix of those medications, the fentanyl and Versed, so fentanyl obviously has a little bit more of an effect on your respiratory drive um, than the Versed does, but them together can cause that. Um, really, all you have to do most of the time is just remind the patient. Now, again, if they can't wake up or they don't wake up or they're completely out of it, um, then you have a couple options, right? You can throw in an oral airway, you can put them on a non-rebreather mask, or you can reverse them potentially, right? So let's say that none of these interventions that you're doing is, are working, then we'll talk about reversal agents on the following slide, okay? Um, but before you get to reversal agents, you really want to work quickly and see if you can just wake them up a little bit, right? Um, that being said, obviously, if your oxygen saturation is just dropping steadily, do not wait, do not hesitate, reverse the medications you gave, We'll talk about that on the next slide, um, but really patient safety is first and most important. Okay, so this last slide, I wanted to go over the reversal agents for these two medications, fentanyl and Versed, right? So why would you need to reverse a patient? Um, let's say they are over sedated or they're not waking up. Their vital signs are not looking too hot, so they can be hypotensive, they can be tachycardic, they can be bradycardic. Their oxygen saturation most of the time is what changes that can be going down, right? Most of the times, administering these two medications can cause either hypotension or a respiratory issue, okay? Um, so again, there are a couple of interventions you can do prior to trying reversal, such as try waking up your patient via verbal or tactile stimuli. You can put them on a non-rebreather mask. Um, you can try a jaw thrust technique, right, which hopefully tries to just, if they fell asleep, um, it takes that tongue and moves it off of their airway, opens that up so they can breathe a little bit easier and hopefully get that oxygen saturation back up. However, those are techniques that should be tried very quickly and very briefly. If you see a continual drop in um, those vital signs, do not hesitate and reverse those medications you gave, right? Especially if that's not how they were when they first came into you, okay? Um, so the two medications that are reversal agents are Narcan or Naloxone is the other name for it for fentanyl reversal and Flumazenil for Versed reversal. So the dosages may vary slightly depending on where you work and per protocol. So obviously always go to that first. Um, however, the dosage for Narcan that I'm familiar with is 0.4 milligrams or one milligram IV over 30 seconds, um, and obviously monitor for patient response. If still nothing, you can repeat every two to three minutes until you reach a maximum dose of 10 milligrams if needed, okay? Um, for flumazenil, the initial dose is 0.2 milligrams, which is two mLs over 15 seconds, IV push, watching for the patient's response, and then another 0.2 or two milligrams two mLs can be given in 45 seconds if the first dose is ineffective for a max dose of 0.6 milligrams total, okay? Um, so those are the two reversal agents used for reversal of fentanyl or Versed or both, right? Um, 
And really that's kind of what you have to remember with sedation is always make sure you know your reversal agents, know your doses, know your patient, um, know where all your emergency airway equipment is, um, and just be caught, be aware, right? That's, that's the biggest thing I can give you. That takeaway is always be aware of what's going on with your patient. Always be monitoring your vitals very closely. Always be monitoring your patient responses. Okay. okay so just a couple of final thoughts about being a nurse in interventional radiology or someone that sedates patient. Things that I like to be aware of, and I think everyone should be aware of, is know what is happening during the procedure, what point you are in the procedure, what to expect to happen, because this can drive whether the patient may need more or less sedation for a certain part. For example, a part that I know is gonna be very painful, I like to give my patients a little bit of a bolus of fentanyl, even 25 mics before that part, knowing that it's gonna be painful, and I wanna give them that analgesic effect. Now, during other procedures where I know the physician is going to be asking the patient to hold their breath or take a deep breath in um, or whatever the case may be, I try to keep them a little bit on the lighter side of sedation so they can follow those commands and the procedure can flow more smooth, right? Um, likewise, never be afraid to speak up if you have a concern about using moderate sedation for a patient. Bring it up to the physician, bring it up to whoever you need to um, and be like, hey, you know, I have a concern. I don't feel comfortable either sedating this patient or I feel like this patient can benefit from a higher level of sedation, right? So whether that be monitored anesthesia care, general anesthesia, et cetera, okay? Always know your reversal agents, very, very key. And likewise, last point that I can't stress enough, you can always give more meds. You can't take back what you already gave, okay? So I always preach that it's, especially if you have a concern, it's easier to start off with a lower dose and give them a little bit more then start with a high dose and then you can't take that back without reversing them, okay? So those are just my final thoughts on sedation. Um, I really hope this video was helpful. That's all I have for you guys today. Um, thank you all for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Um, I look forward to seeing you here in the future. Please subscribe if you haven't to this channel and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. All right, guys, have a great one.